Well, folks, normally we just post videos of our own content on our channels, but today I'm going to make an exception because the Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation has produced a video that celebrates 25 years of elk restoration in Kentucky. And that's such an important event that I want to share this video with all of you on our channel. And a little background, Kentucky previously was home to Eastern Elk. The Eastern Elk were gone from Kentucky by the 1840s. So when the Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation partnered with the Kentucky Department of Fish and Wildlife in 1997, elk had been gone over 150 years from that landscape. And this was a super ambitious project. It became the largest ungulate, largest wildlife restoration ever undertaken and ever accomplished in North America. It happened in our lifetimes. This makes conservation tangible, something you can see, something you can understand, enjoy, and appreciate. So, over the course of five years, 1,500 plus elk were brought to Kentucky. More than half of them came from Utah. Some came from Arizona, New Mexico, Kansas, North Dakota, a whole bunch of states. They came to Kentucky on these reclaimed landscapes, mostly eastern and southeastern Kentucky. And now there's more than 13,000 elk in Kentucky. Who, who would have ever thought that? And it's not just the importance of the elk in Kentucky, but here's what Kentucky did. They said, hey, we got these elk from somewhere else. We're going to share these elk. So we now have elk in Virginia, West Virginia, Tennessee, North Carolina, Missouri, Arkansas. We've used that Kentucky herd to augment herds in Wisconsin. So this Kentucky elk herd is a gem of America, not just Kentucky. So I, I want to take a, a quick minute, give this introduction to tell you why I feel this video is an important celebration. We often talk about the things that maybe are challenges ahead or threats to what we love. Well, every once in a while, we should take the time to celebrate the successes. And there's no greater success in the history of wildlife restoration on the North American continent through relocation than what we see in Kentucky. So, enjoy this video. Take comfort in knowing that your work your money and your advocacy help provide this great wildlife restoration. Kentucky has been the center of heroic stories over the years, and this is certainly one for the history books. The presence of elk across the countryside. our gear out so hopefully we can start catching elk soon get everything ready before before everything gets going we got some blood tubes got some ear tags collecting hair vital data from our elk 
write down some of the basic info on onto the data sheets. That way it saves a little time whenever that do come in. Yeah. And then uh, we got a temperature probe. Like cool. There are so many pieces to keep track of at the same time that it's just tons of wheels turning at the same time. The coal mines of southeast Kentucky make up a large portion of the Kentucky Elk Zone. This is where crews from Kentucky Department of Fish and Wildlife Resources, University of Kentucky, and Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation volunteers have come to help expand the landscape of Kentucky elk. Let me know when they're coming, that way I get down there with the drug. It would just be me and the fuel truck guy who's going to help unload them. Be careful, make sure you know stay on this side. This cold January morning is ideal for an elk capture, keeping the elk cool during the process. You have to just drive that one back in. The helicopter crew prepares for liftoff, while others on the ground wait for the first elk to arrive. That moment will mark the beginning of another historic Kentucky event. Once in the air, the goal is simple. Find elk, then capture. The recent snowfall will aid in spotting elk, but the steep, heavily wooded Southern Appalachian mountain range still gives these elk the advantage. Once netted, the crew works quickly to safely prepare this cow for the short trip back, taking steps to eliminate all undue stress to the elk. First thing, just get a blindfold. Keeps him calm. And then, uh, okay. your knee on your neck there. Yeah, there, like that. If you're on your own, just get one hobble on right there. Off of that. Corporate, then she's safe. Okay. And you can You're gonna do on. that now or do you want to process her quickly? No, no, there's two of us here, so we should be fine. Right, so. Securely harnessed and attached, her final destination at this point is still unknown. She will either be collared and released back into this area as a part of an ongoing cow-calf survival study, or relocated to start a new herd on the Daniel Boone National Forest, McCreary County. Either way, her significance as elk number one is historical. This animal's gonna go to McQuarrie County. John Hass. The stock trailer, located away from the noise of the drop zone, will be used to hold elk, as well as transport. You're in charge of the head. Ultimately, her head needs to be up in that corner. Even if she is the only elk captured today, the two-hour trip will be made to her new home. And elk are really hardy animals, so you know they, they can take a lot, as we've seen over the years, catching elk and bringing them here. You know, minimal time touching those animals, and then stay quiet around them to keep that stress level down. Get them, you know, in and out as fast as possible. Blood samples, hair samples, ear tags, and GPS radio collars will provide crucial information to the health and size of current and future herds. You can unbuckle, but just keep, them, keep her legs together. And she she somebody goes one, one, two, three, and you, let, you pull that strap, you will go out the back door, and he'll go out behind you. Here the counter. One, two, three. <laughs> that 
That was fun. <laughs> We've got 4.1 million acres in the elk zone in Kentucky. And there's plenty of that that doesn't have elk. All right, move. Go. Put them on the Dana Boone National Forest, which is public land that's going to be public forever, to establish a huntable elk herd over there. Mature cows that are captured are tested for pregnancy before a release location is determined. She's likely with a calf, so we're going to release her back on this site with a GPS collar to try to just enhance uh, data with regards to uh, adult and calf survival. And just make sure they're healthy while we're doing anesthesia or if we have to work them up and put um, collar on, collars on them and then, you know, collecting you know, samples when we got them. I mean, that's the other important thing is when you have an animal in hand, there's valuable data there. So much of the Southern Appalachians is closed canopy forest. And I'm talking over 90% closed canopy. And elk being more of a grazer, uh, but also a browser needs this open field meadow habitat, much that you'd consider out west. We first put elk here in Kentucky and started in 1997. The, the mine habitat that they were put on was tremendous, uh, and those populations flourished. And it's interesting because the habitat around us was, was often so good that they didn't leave. So we have vast areas of open quality elk habitat that really haven't been tapped yet by elk. So what projects like this do, uh, it gives them a little push. Elk continue in at a steady rate, but this process is far from over. Probably catch 50 to 75 elk in the next eight to 10 days. What is going out out west doesn't necessarily equal up to what we're seeing here. We don't have predators. Our elk are migrating. They're not living in three feet of snow every winter. So we've got to essentially get the research and learn ourselves. We made a concerted effort to get volunteers, members, to come out and assist us with the hands-on field work. Get them spread out and doing good things for, uh, for the help. It's pretty awesome. Conservation in action. Awesome. It should be important to everybody in the state because that's part of what is Kentucky. They were here before we got here. We need to encourage that population increase so we can all experience that in the future. Two bull boards in the back of that white F-250 if you have to go in. Copy. The current plan is to get one more male. We start out with a decent sex ratio and then uh, we'll move to the next property. Hugely beneficial. I mean, like two thirds of the available public property in Eastern Kentucky lies in those counties without elk. With the quota met for this property, this bull will be the last of the day, achieving the desired bull cow ratio for the day one relocation. Anthers are removed immediately for the safety of the crew and elk during the transport process. Pretty hard to describe and you think about what it'll be in six, eight, ten years down the road after they continue to be protected, have some nice quality hunting opportunities and chasing elk in the big mountains in the Forest Service. When you think about what we're doing here, physically moving elk to new locations to expand their range. It doesn't get any more RMBF than that. The two-hour drive to the Daniel Boone National Forest marks what could be the final phase of the Kentucky Elk Restoration Program that started 25 years earlier. I think there are endless possibilities. Your average person will have an opportunity to come out here and possibly someday hunt elk, but, but certainly come here to view elk. 
We really want to work with the public to make sure that they have ownership in, uh, in the management of these resources. RMEF has such a, a stronghold in the West, and rightfully so, we've done so much amazing work. But that opportunity is just as great here in the East. Looking down the road long term, man, one of the greatest goals I could see us accomplishing would be having this cohesive, contiguous southern Appalachian elk herd. And that would be something uh, noteworthy for the history books. Well, I can tell you this, Kentucky Fish and Wildlife has a lot of great partners and none better than the Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation. This thing from the ground up out of nothing. No flight plan, no manual to be found. You and I, we're driving in the dark without headlights, trying to find our way. It's hard telling where we'll be. The coming days will. Eric, you're going to back up about 30 some odd feet.